Let us not dawdle, for there are grudges to settle, and new entries in the Damas Kron to write! Howdy howdy, C-Double here and welcome to a match sent in by a move Hacker. You've seen him on the channel before, he's an amazing Dwarf player and he's going to be playing the Dowie versus the Lizardmen today. So we'll go over his his army, he really, I mean he has a really 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 good army. We'll go over some of the things uh, that he has and uh, I'll talk a little bit about it because I've, I've pinched, I've stolen pieces of his army for my uh, Lizardmen layout. Lizardman lists since Red Crest's skinks have come out and because they're so good. First of all, he has three longbeards just to make a very, very solid center right up in here. And uh, they all have one chevron, which is a little t trick. I mean, it helps you get to the second chevron faster, plus you get three stat points, so it's just all win. And he kind of has an offset uh, line because he has the Warriors of Dragonfire pass over here, which is a regiment of renowned dwarf warriors. They have anti infantry and they're good against Red Crest of Skinks. And he does have on his side two dwarf warriors. In the second row, he has two miners with blasting charges. And this is the unit specifically that I took from him. And I think it's really improved my list because those blasting charges are so devastating on Red Crest of Skinks cohorts. Uh, you know, if he gets uh, skirmishers in too close, they're really, really strong. Uh, Really, for this back line, he has just two miners back here, and the they're really just to get in the way of stuff. They are armor piercing; they're okay anti large for 325 gold, and they really get in the way of stuff. And he, of course, he has the dragonback slayers who are awesome; like they are fantastic in every matchup they're in. For his his actual damage department, he has two trollhammer torpedoes. Now, these iron drakes with trollhammer torpedoes do a massive amount of damage. I think, though I'm not 100% sure, they might be the highest total damage possibility out of any Dowie unit. I've done some testing on them. They're crazy, the amount of damage they can put out. It just goes real slow. But when you get hit by two volleys at the same time, it is scary. And he has the Ulthar's Raiders. We know how much we like them in this matchup. They're really, really good. And he has two quarters, just base quarters, and they're really to deal with those red crested skinks and sort of uh, a debuff target from the Ulthar's Raiders. And for his leadership, he does have a runesmith, which is the base rune of Wrath and Rune, and he has a base lord. And I think base lord just a thousand gold naked, no other abilities. So let's look at his opponent. So his opponent actually has three Sourus Warriors with shields. Now Sourus Warriors with shields are just an, a solid all-around unit. I think they are the go-to infantry unit for the Lizardmen in this uh, match. He has five Red Crested Skinks, uh, including one, the Regiment of Renown, which is the Cohort of Sotek. And I've seen them a couple of times, and they're they're actually better than I originally thought. They're pretty darn good I, like uh, for what they do. They have Frenzy, they have Poison, they're unbreakable. They, I mean, they're... They're actually, I think, going to be in every matchup with the Dowie. Uh, for the sides, he does have two units of Cold One Riders on his flanks. He has, uh, here's the heavy hitters, two units of Croxagores. Now, we know how nasty Croxagores are in this matchup. Yeah, they just, like, it, they just go to work. And, and uh, we've seen Falcon's list has three Croxagores. I've seen other really solid uh, ladder players. They bring three Croxagores, which are so good. Uh... Uh, this list only has two, but it's really solid. Croxers are good in this matchup. Now, he just has a Soros Old Blood on foot. I think he just has a couple abilities. He has uh, Horn of Kygor for plus 25 melee attack. Guess who's going to put that on? And he has the Stand Your Ground for 27 melee defense, which is a very, very good. And it, I don't know, really, you don't need to bring it, uh, anything else for your Lord. He can just come in and kick some kick some butt on foot and also has a skink, skink priest of heavens on foot and he only has one spell curse of the midnight wind for the minus 30 armor minus 26 melee attack so his plan is really to use that curse of the midnight wind alongside of his sourus warriors over and over and debuff the dow if there's anything really strong with the dowie debuff the blobs and uh he also right he has this ancient salamander now this ancient salamander got nerfed pretty hard i got lost a lot of health and it used to be 180 range now it's 160 but Still has a lot of damage, 420, like it's a, a, a speed of 75, a highly mobile artillery piece that causes fear and terror. The stats, melee attack 34 and 32 are not great. Weapon strength is okay and armor piercing. Uh, the key is this thing is really, really quick. And you're going to see, I get a chance to see it. It has, also has a very weird animation that you're going to get a chance to see in this match. So we'll start the game going and, oh, maybe I didn't say you had a cannon. Of course, just one cannon and that cannon's just 
he, you know, he's just going to find a target with it. Right now, he's just going to take a few shots at the Sourus Warriors with shields because uh, there's nothing else really in uh, range for him. And there's no, no need to do anything. You know, the line is good. He's just got to let, let this uh, sort of group come in. And you can see this Ancient Salamander is kind of coming in the side, looking for some shots. And uh, I, I'm like, I don't know if he saw it coming, but boom, look at that. Four models in, what, 4,500 health from 58? Like 1,200, 1,300 health in one shot. So these things are crazy, these ancient salamanders. So you got to really watch them, and they're hard to hit. So now he's put his, his cannon on this thing, and you're going to see the, the army's coming. He's, he's trying to get a shot on him, and it actually is really hard to hit this thing because it's really sleek. It's like a tomb scorpion, hey? Uh, where it, and now he's going to take another shot, and boom, he does take a hit in return. And it gets a shot in there, but he's really do do dodging these uh, cannon shots. So he's coming in the back. Meanwhile, um, a move has got to get ready because here comes here comes the main line. He's gonna really s try to get everything engaged. He's going very wide with these cold one riders. Really going very very wide. And uh, he's got these cold one riders sort of parked in here. I think you can see a move is just trying to get his line ready. You know, he's get his line ready. He knows everything's coming. And uh, now he's going to change his uh, cannon shot to these Croxagors because we really got to look. And now he's also going to really go after these co Cohort of Sotek. He slowed them down. He wants to get his quarter shots in on them. He wants to get his uh, miners with blasting charges. You can see we got some blasting charges coming on these Red Crested Skinks. Boom, just going hard, getting a ton of damage in early and uh, really pushing really hard to get that front line uh, going. You can see he's got the Trollhammer torpedoes aimed right here into these Croxagores and he's got where is the Trollhammer? Right, he, right here into the South River Blood. He's going to change to these Croxagores once they get in, but he wants to start taking some shots and he's just going to throw in some Longbeards and his Runesmith to really hold this part of the line very solidly. He's got this part of the line. The Red Crested Skinks are going to beat the Dwarf Warriors, but he's got some time. And he's just such some shots going into those Croxagores. He's trying to burn them down, and then boom, in comes the Cold One Riders to the side, and the Miners are doing what the Miners are supposed to do. Uh, still still got the Sourus Warriors with shields. That's going to be a problem on this flank. But over here, not much of a problem. we got the Dragonback Slayers. We can push off this Ancient Salamander. He does have the Cold One Riders over here. we got the Miners in. And he's taking shots over here into the Iron Drakes and into the Old Arch Raiders. Now, he's switched targets. He wants to get after these Cold One Riders. He pushed back. He's pushed back his uh, quarters and he's pushed up his miners. And you can see the uh, his opponent just spam clicking, trying to get him into the uh, miners. And he's got these cohort of Sotex somehow have gone through that front line. They took a ton of damage off the get go, but they've somehow gone to that front line. They have 54 models left, which is absolutely crazy. They have hardly any health. They must have used that too stubborn to die ability or something. So really, they got to all be killed. So he has been able to actually route off these Cold One Riders, but in come the Sourus Warriors. Now he slowed them down. They're coming in. He's going to get his Dragonback Slayers to push in and try and at least hold them up and stop them so he can get the rest of his his uh, his uh, uh, army going. And he's got his cannon. He was trying to take more shots at this Ancient Salamander. The Ancient Salamander is take, still taking shots right into the side here. We've got Cold One Riders in here. And it's really, this front line is doesn't have long, right? Like the front line, you're going to lose... Uh, when you have these Croxagores in there, the front line doesn't have long, and now there's Warrior Dragonfire Pass are wavering. These Longbeards are getting real low. These Longbeards are getting real low, and everything's starting to come in. I don't know how these cohort of Sotex got into the middle, but they somehow did. He must have been spam clicking them to get in, and you can see he's just taking shot after shot. He is missing with this Ancient Salamander, but these, unfortunately, these Cold One Riders have got in. There's no way to push them out. Because he's got just got too many tasks and not enough troops. The cannon is offline, and you can see these guys have stopped routing their back. And really, these re cohort of Sotex have gotten on top of the Iron Drakes, which is a huge source of damage. And these other high Iron Drake now have the Skink Priest and these Croxagore. So this whole side of the line has been collapsed. And I, again, I still don't know how those Red Crystal Skinks got in, but you can see now in comes Curse of the Midnight Wind. So everything in here has minus 26 melee attack and uh, minus 30 armor so the Soros Warriors are going to do good everything in here that doesn't have armor piercing is going to do really good in this pile and you can see the 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 Salamander is coming on in he does have Rune of Wrath and Rune trying to slow it down but look he just goes right through this miners with blasting charges which seems crazy to me 
and gets into this back line of the quarters and you can see now everything is really really being pressed hard because these long are still holding against the Saurus Warriors amazingly enough but down in the center everything is being pushed the Saurus Royal Blood's coming against the Lord and everything's kind of come in. You can see everything here is starting to break. That ancient salamander's come in and pushed off the quarters. There's really not much left going on. He's trying to get away desperately with the Lord and trying to get the targets on targets. But you can see these Croxagores are coming into the Dragonback Slayers. And this uh, Runesmith is sort of going to be pushed in. He's going to try and get into this ancient salamander. He's doing everything he can to get some shots on him. I mean, he has 500 health. And is he going to take a hit from that Runesmith? Boom, 364 health, but you can see the Lord is wavering. Still got Curse of the Midnight Wind. He's got some stuff on him, and that is the game. Wow. So a couple weird things happened in this game. Um, number one, these this cult of so cohort of Sotek, I don't know how they made it through that front line. That was really, really weird. But they did 77 kills. I mean, really, really good. Now, this list... This is a strong list, and I know it because I've taken uh, Miners of Blasting Charges from Amu's list specifically. And, uh, you know, bringing in the Iron Drakes. Iron Drakes with Trollhammer Torpedoes are very strong. And, uh, you know, it's just a good, solid back line. you got Slayers back there, and you got enough because he has 19 out of 20 units. He has enough to deal with uh, the vast majority of this and was able to deal with the Cold One Riders, even though they sort of got through. It was that weird stuff with a cohort of so tech or how they how the heck they got in again it's, it's still very strange but they made it um the uh lord seven kills the runesmith ten three and eight with the miners the miners are never going to get a ton of kills that's not their job same with the miners and blasters chargers nine and twelve the dwarf warriors twelve and forty seven really defending those flanks they must have got a piece of those red crested skinks uh, 22, 21, and 13. And those Longbeards held and held and held. They did a fantastic job in the front line uh, doing what they needed to do, but they didn't get a lot of kills because they were fighting these Croxagores, and they had some had the two Saurus Warriors and two Croxagores in there, um, kind of into that front line. 26 with the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. 82 with the Dragonback Slayers. Dragonback Slayers are awesome. They're always going to do awesome. They're a fantastic unit. 52 and 14 with the Quarters. And the quarters are are really good at take mowing down these red crested skinks before they get there, and then getting onto targets to go with the Ulthar's Raiders with that marked by Ulthar. Uh, Ulthar's Raiders 12, and here's really the Iron Drake 66 and 56. They did a lot of damage, but you could see they they weren't quite getting all their shots off onto these Croxers, which is also a little bit strange. But you know they still ended up getting a fair fair amount of kills and. Uh, 19 with the cannon was going after that ancient salon matter now for the lizardman army i think a, a solid build uh, you know this red this ancient salamander is very interesting i wonder if we're going to see more of that i mean it's vulnerable and uh you know uh, i think it's uh yeah it is vulnerable i know that with uh we've seen a, a re, uh uh in two it Agent Salamanders twice in the past couple of months, uh, but I know what I've actually used one. I have one gyrocopter in my build, and and uh, when you have that one gyrocopter, Agent Salamanders they really they're rushed all the time because you can just send your gyrocopter and just get on it. Uh, it's a little harder with that cannon because you could see uh, Energized here was kind of walking his Salamander around that ridge, making it hard to get hit and taking shots in between. Um, so it was really true line of sighting that cannon because the cannon was set up in a really nice place It's just that salamander is a very low to the ground unit with a small hitbox. So um, Yeah, with the red crystal strengths 58 38 76 and 11 89 66 and 30 the Saurus Warriors are already going to perform 77 with the cult cohort of Sotek 45 49 with Colwyn Riders 91 and 44 with the Croxagores. I mean if these guys are allowed to keep working they just go to work you know, and I thought that uh, when I was watching this at first, you, you know, because you watch the replays, you can press the space bar and see what they're aiming at. I mean, I thought these guys were just going to be obliterated because I saw a move put his cannon on them, and then as soon as they got into into uh, range, he put one of his iron drakes and his quarters and was just mowing this guy down. But then the uh, red crested skinks made it through, and the, these one group of cold one riders came through, and even though they got partially stopped by the uh, miners, he spam clicked them through and forced them into the middle of that engagement and that really 
from there on, you could see that A move was just trying to reposition units and get the right unit on the right unit and get rid of these cold one riders. Then the other cold one riders, by the time he'd got ridden both, then the front line was already starting to collapse and, and the Croxagors had done their, and done their job. Anyways, that's the match. Thank you so much, Abu, for sending this in. You know, it's very rare people send their losses in. And uh, I think they're fun because, you know, you, expect, you always expect to win, I think, when, when someone sends a video in. So I thought it was really fun to watch. And uh, really interesting and kind of strange things with... It's kind of strange with the Ancient Salamander, sort of how it moves and uh, whatnot. And really strange with these cohort of Sotek. Like, he pulled them right through. He must have clicked that too stubborn to die and just spam clicked them all the way through, which was an interesting way to do it. And this is not like a move hacker didn't focus these guys. He put a Rune of Wrath and Rune on them. He put Miners with Blasting Charges and Quarters. And this, these freaking guys still made it through. And then once they were through, they saw like 50 models. So even though they must have all been at like one health, and even though they're all at one health, they're still they're still able to attack as though they have a you know their full health. So it was a really interesting tactic by Energized, and uh, an interesting game to watch. A, a game where where I think you know there's there's nothing to the the list. You know, it's just a few things and how this game played out that make it terribly interesting because I think these are both strong builds and uh, you know the way they the way this game played out though was I thought was fascinating so I hope you guys like it love to hear from you I always ask for comments because that's my favorite thing about doing this is hearing from you guys you know what did you think of the build and what did you think of the Lizardman build have you seen any Lizardman lately lately on ladder are you seeing more ancient salamanders or more croxagors you know sort of what is the, the thing I think Everyone's seeing these red crested skinks, and I think we're gonna keep seeing them. Uh, you know, the answer the answer to red crested skinks are miners with blasting charges and longbeards. Um, you know, and a move had them, so <laughs> you know, it was one of those games. So, anyways, again, love to hear from you. Hope you found it interesting. I will see you soon.